we have been on just such an insane streak with deer here in the Hunter Classic, and specifically mule deer, that I just had to put the quest for a 400 Rosie on the back burner and come here and test our luck once again on Timber Gold Trails. Just this past Wednesday on our weekly classic stream, we were able to take down both a 240.6 typical mule deer and a 323 non-typical mule deer probably 15 minutes apart. So that's the inspiration behind this hunt. And of course, we'll be after everything from Rocky Mountain Elk to mule deer wolves and everything in between. So getting our hunt started with a pretty average, I would say, Rocky Mountain Elk 240 to 295. And I'm really trying to resist the urge to fast travel. It's so tempting. That is a really tiny one, and I'd almost rather would shoot that, but I think we're going to spook this one. It's so tempting early on in hunts to just kind of fast travel somewhere good because you're pretty likely to get a call. You're pretty likely to quickly encounter something. And obviously that is a good thing, but I want to try to hunt through more of the map and not just jump from tent to tent. We didn't spook that tiny bolt. My goodness, does he blend in there though? He's still staring at us. If he spooks, that's fine. But I kind of want to get it only because he is comically low scoring. So that's going to spook the others, but another kind of unimpressive bull was up there too. So this guy, probably 270 or thereabouts, double long at literally 5.7 meters. After a very lengthy wait, 262 score for him. And one thing we know for sure, this guy is going to be way shy of that. I think he's just a 2x2 two two, unless I'm missing something. Ended up with a double long shot again there. 26 meters away, 88 score. That's about as small as we've had, so just gonna take a quick trophy shot. We don't have a Hall of Shame in Classic, more like a Gallery of Shame, so that guy can be added to it. And like I was talking about fast traveling, I normally would just kind of hop over to this tent by now. We're going to try to really work our way down through here, maybe hunt our way down to this tent and tree stand. That's been a good spot for us, and maybe we can run into more stuff along the way. And perhaps starting off on the right foot for Mjolnir, 160 to 185 for that guy. Oh, and we have... Another decent buck coming in from the left side. He's definitely better. 185 to 210. I thought there should have been a herd here. And I was kind of confused when it was only the one. So there should be five bucks. That's the one kind of problem. Because we're probably going to have to shoot this guy before we know that for sure. I've got the 308. So we can kind of go to the last second. But I'm going to say maybe it's better. To just grab the bow and go for this. Now, of course, he is in the worst spot possible. Just saw an elk go running by too, probably getting chased by wolves. So let's stick an arrow in him. Dropped him. And I'm going to say probably 190s. He had one short time. He was borderline like low 200s frame. I think there's a bull elk stuck on something out there. Not too bad, but he didn't look huge. Anyway, lots of stuff going on. Our first mule deer buck though. Long spine and liver, one at 93.8. Not a bad first. Still got stuff running all around. I think that was one of the bucks we didn't see, so let's just scoot out here and try to spot everything, because maybe they're going to be running around still. Not seeing anything huge. I do think I saw the fifth buck. Probably like a, a 120s or 130s. So we should be good to go. And maybe now, because it's such chaos over here, we actually should fast travel. We can either go here or across. I kind of think we're going to go across, because we'll end up moving to the west anyway. So we might as well try this spot. Oh boy. Um, we got to get prone, which we managed to do when the screen was still black. Okay, this tent we can crawl up on. So we're going to try to do that to get a vantage point here. Because whatever is right beside us, not a bad buck again. Actually, I might even say a big buck. Yeah, that's a big buck. Not huge. 165 to 195, and a couple of short tines. Again, there should be five of them, and I see four. Unsure where the fifth one is, and I think yet again, oh boy. Um, arrows would have been a really good idea. I think he's going to spot us and flee. Oh, wow. Loading weapons would have been a great idea. I can't believe he's still there. Why he didn't spook, I have no idea. So that wasn't really the point of fast traveling, but I mean, we'll take it. Another decent buck, probably once again, one that we didn't end up seeing out of that group. 
But this guy, I, I'm going to say 180. It's only because of the estimate. Hard shot him at 187. A couple of pretty good ones. Just need one that's a little bit bigger than that. I both like and dislike what's going on in this map right now. Another nice buck, 185 to 215. By the way, there is a grizzly bear, like literally right beside us. So I think again, we're actually gonna go with the 308. Go ahead and try to get this guy down rather than risk the bear getting close and spooking everything. I could see him topping 200. He's a little bit bigger. Uh, probably we have more pressing issues than worried about the score right now. That should take care of that. So we get a little bonus one for actually using the rifle, but I can't quite tell on that one. But what I was getting at about kind of liking and disliking basically the size of the mule deer that we're finding, typically when we kill a really big buck, it seems like there's not a bunch of pretty nice ones on the map. It's a bunch of sort of average stuff. And whether it's early on in the hunt or maybe hours in after seeing a bunch of small bucks, then we might find a really nice one. So hard to say, I mean, it doesn't mean there's not a big buck on the map, but rarely do we have a hunt where both things kind of happen. But as for this guy, our third mule deer buck of a hunt and our third big frame buck, ended up uh, basically hitting everything with the 308, 192 for him, so actually not even our best one. They've all basically been the same general size, just with different deductions and stuff that have sort of altered their score. Well, I can say one thing for sure. There's wolves over here somewhere that I'm not seeing. Because these mule deer does are just running around like crazy, but I'm actually trying to call in a bull elk. Obviously not any of these cows that are right here. I think I see them moving around back there. He's not a bad sized bull, but nothing special. And I decided to just fast travel down here before going all the way up north along the river. So we're going to see if we can just drop this guy. I guess the cows are going to stay, which probably is the best result. And we may see if whatever wolves are around just come into a call. So maybe we'll swap to the other side here. Got a random buck that just stepped out, but he's not exactly anything big. So probably going to leave that alone and try a wolf call. And yet again, a decent buck out here and this time we're not even trying to call them in there's actually two kind of big frame bucks that one's one wait am i spotting the right one? Oh, he's actually smaller than i thought but he's 145 to 170 and then this guy again probably in that 190 range we're actually sitting here i haven't seen a wolf i haven't heard a wolf and i was gonna go ahead and call in one of these two bull elk but i mean we might as well Crack out the gun again? I don't know what it is. Maybe it's all the animals in this area, but we're lagging just a little bit. And I'd kind of rather not do that. So, trying to make sure we get on the right deer for absolutely certain. That's the 185, the 210. Little wobbly in the tree stand, but that will drop him. And what's that, like four? Mule deer over 180? Still haven't had that one absolute monster, but I'll tell you what. It reminds me of... The early days of Timber Gold Trails just seems like over every hill and around every corner, there's a, you know, 350 bull or a 180, 190 muley. That guy's 320, so maybe not quite the 350 thing we were talking about, though I think that one coming in across was close. But another nice buck, I think another short time keeping us from eclipsing that 200 mark, liver and stomach at 197 further than I thought, and 191 this time. So it's been, I think, Three 190s and a 188 or something like that. And we're just going to keep on moving. I said we're going to go like north up the river. Decided to bounce over to here first. And we'll kind of just loop around and then work our way up through. I mean, it's literally every time. Got another group of bucks coming in. It's like the same estimate every time. 185 to 215. Lots of heavy bucks too. I don't know if that competition for like your three or five heaviest mule deers running right now but if it is we should have entered that because it is just consistent 125 130 kilo bucks and right around that 190 mark but i think here we can probably drop this guy and get away with it so whatever else is in this herd because it's more than one it's probably five we should be able to at least see more than this rather average looking buck so we've seen potentially four of the five not sure if there is a fifth one back there but this guy is about to get so close to the tower that if we let him get really even a couple of meters closer we're gonna end up 
basically shooting the edge of the tower. The hitboxes for the windows are a little bit bigger than they look, so it's very easy to stick an arrow, like, right here. <laughs> so we had to get that guy down. Never did see a fifth buck if there is one. This could be the herd that we shot that first one out of, but I don't think it was 185 to 215, as the estimate on the one other better buck that we didn't shoot. So that guy's a 132. And I still think we're shy of 200, even though we've gone up to 215 on that estimate again. I thought there was... Now maybe there's not a short time. I guess he's got a chance at it. Double lung liver with him. Now he's 192 once again, but almost 130 kilo. But that's five now. Really quality mule deer bucks. When this is almost certainly the smallest buck, other than that one that we shot kind of as a bonus for an entire hunt, like we're an hour and 41 minutes in. It's kind of absurd. 160 to 185, a really weird estimate. So I'm guessing he's going to be maybe like a 182, something like that. But if he'll stop, we'll definitely try to get him. Even though we've had a bunch that look more or less just like this guy. We're kind of low on GM right now. And every one of these is worth something like maybe 60, 70 GM. There was a buck like right underneath us, I thought, that maybe didn't spook. I guess maybe he had wandered away, but we'll try to get him to. And he's probably going to be exactly behind that tree. By the time we get drawn back, he actually turns, so let's get him. That's going to send stuff running. I don't know how many kills we're at now. Looks like it's going to be 12. And again, other than a couple of bucks that we've basically shot in addition to big frame 180, 190 scoring mule deer, everything's been really, really solid, just nothing super special. So this one, going to be maybe higher GM than I thought. Yeah, 86 for him and a 181 score. And I mean, we still have the entirety of the river to go. We're going to... Let's clear all this stuff to make it a little easier. We're going to just move all the way up along. And the plan is to get basically all the way north, almost up to that big lake. That's got to be a 400. Look at the size of that Rocky. Oh my goodness. The frame on that thing is huge. I ri is he spooked? He is. God, I want to get him with the bow, but because he's spooked... Is that a wolf back there? Nah, I think that's just shadows, but... Wolves probably are the reason he's spooked, and he could easily just spook again. I think that should bring him down. We were probably a little low. Ah, second shot completely whiffed. Hopefully that's going to bring him down, because we ended up tracking him anyway. We'd have been better off with the bow, but... <laughs> just the mere width of that frame, you see a lot of big Rocky Mountain Elk. 350, 360... Even like 370, 380 isn't that insanely rare. And you kind of get used to seeing stuff like that. It was so obvious that that one's bigger than your, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill decent bull. That got my heart going so fast. And we did, by the way, hit a lung. So just the absolute tankiness of either that specific elk or Rockies in general with the 308. That'd be the reason that he ran some i thought he went right up behind our stand i'm not seeing the next track but i know he went somewhere in this direction we'll go back and just pick up the tracks if we can't find him but i am fairly certain he's gonna be laying somewhere just on the back side of this hill we might be off on the direction he ran in but i'm thinking we should be able to see him so he was one hill over basically a little bit further away from the stand than i thought I don't see anything really detracting from this guy's score, so let's see what we just shot. I hear a wolf, by the way, right lung shot, and we are looking at a forever calculating score 404. Not bad. The crazy thing is, you know, as compared to Roosevelt's, this isn't insanely rare. It's still, you don't get a lot of 400 Rockies, but the two in our lodge since Trophy Lodge just came out, I think it's 400 flat and 401. So this will be our new biggest Rocky in the Lodge. There's just nothing like a big classic elk. I mean, there just isn't. Look at the frame on that. It's just incredible. I try to like bring the camera angle a little bit over so we can see the width of the frame, but also kind of more of at least one side with like all these back tines and stuff. Got the gun leaning on one of the tines. I think that turned out pretty darn good given the fact that we don't have any sunlight here. He happened to drop in the shadows, but there was actually another bull that called while we were on our way over here. We heard those wolves run by too, but he should 
kind of becoming it. We weren't in that trophy shot screen too long. And I had thought about it like, you know, maybe we wait to claim him just in case it's another monster, but I was more afraid of something happening and losing him. And now that we see him, I think we made the right choice. We'll probably just leave that go. There's been such quality with basically every antlered animal we shot. I'd hate to even break the streak. We're just going to pass up on that one. Well, I can't say I expected to get one today, but we've got a puma down here along the river. 60 to 95 kilos, so probably nothing special, but could be decent. And we're getting way more use out of the 308 than I would have expected at all. That's going to drop him. And I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I remembered to bring the e-collar specifically for them. I think I've tried to call in a couple of different wolves and it just hasn't worked out. And there is, of course, the collar that also brings in cow elk for them. The e-collar is the only way to bring in Puma. And remembering to grab it for the loadout is probably the reason we just took that guy down. And you know, despite the fact that we shot like six mule deer that were all the exact same size, pretty good variety in the sun. We've had a couple of Rockies, obviously that 400, a bunch of mule deer bucks, we shot a grizzly bear that was aggressive, and now a puma, which I'm guessing is going to be in the 15 range, but probably not huge. 82.6 kilo, 15.19, but that 148 GM and, you know, really nice reward basically for just taking that out, we will always take something like that. So, I mentioned, you know, earlier shooting that buck we're sort of low on gm lately we just crossed over 1000 from this hunt and it's just been from kind of a lower number of animals but a high quality of animals and we didn't even have to go that far to find another one now that's gonna be a female you can always tell basically the head size because like bears or wolves they're scored by their skull and the females they're pretty much all the same size right around 12. The males will have a notably larger skull, and that's the easiest way to identify them, even if you can't spot them for whatever reason. But we'll take that one, even with a female puma, it's going to be a decent GM reward. And we're getting pretty close to that lake that I talked about. Got a little more room to go, and maybe we can stumble into either, you know, a 7th 190 mule deer, or maybe some wolves. But for that, we're still going to make 33 GM, which isn't bad for something that we had to call in for maybe a minute. So it looks like our bonus puma kills are going to be the last ones of the hunt. What I actually did was fast travel to here a second time, and then sort of hunt my way up around this sort of lake. It's worked in the past towards the end of hunts, but not so much in this case. But I have gone ahead and placed the new 404 Rocky in the lodge, so we'll go and take a peek at that. And you know, if we could do Rocky Mountain Elk Skull Mounts, it'd be really nice to be able to add something like that. But we've got the old 401 here. And then we replaced the 400 flat with our 404.8 from today. And it's really cool. Even though deer were kind of the inspiration behind the hunt, it ends up being an elk, what was it, two plus hours in, I think, where we finally end up adding yet another trophy to this lodge. And Timbergold Trails has been really, really producing a lot of cool stuff as of late. And just because it hasn't been in a video, I'm going to go ahead and show it here in the lodge. When doing the, I think it was the Pancake Day missions, we actually killed a 205 dark fur type axis on stream as well. So there's been quite a number of new additions to this lodge, but probably none more recently impactful than the 240 typical mule deer, that 323 not tip, and now a 404 all from Timbergold in the matter of just a couple of days. So we will probably be headed back there sooner rather than later, but it's a nice little break from that constant grind of looking for a 400 Rosie. And you know, go figure we get a 400 Rocky instead, but. As I talked about, they're a little more common, and I'm pretty happy to finally make an upgrade to that in the lodge. So anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.